In today's health alert, measles outbreaks are still happening in various parts of the U.S., even though there's a highly effective vaccine. And while case numbers are not super high, the outbreaks still raise concerns among doctors and health professionals. Joining us now is our chief health editor, Dr. Parthen Nandy. Uh, good afternoon, Doc. So where does this stand? What is the latest on measles? Afternoon, Linda. So here's right. Yeah. Uh, since December, there have been eight confirmed cases of measles in Philadelphia. Now, health officials reported that all cases involve people that were, this is important, who are not vaccinated. Additional cases have also been identified in Delaware, New Jersey, and Washington State. Plus, there's a report of a person with measles who traveled through airports in the D.C. area. So despite you know, the disease being declared eliminated back in 2000, outbreaks are still happening. Uh, you know, in Michigan, there was a large, large outbreak with 44 confirmed cases back in 2019, 40 of which occurred in Oakland County. The initial case was traced back to someone who traveled to New York from Israel. Now, travel outside the country, that's one of the ways, Glenda, Americans become exposed to measles. The outbreak in Philadelphia is also reportedly linked to a person who traveled outside the U.S. So the CDC says 41 cases last year. That's fairly lower than recent years. So why the concern? Yeah, it's important, right? So why are people worried? There are a few reasons. One is that measles is highly contagious. And somebody with measles coughs, sneezes, or talks even, infectious droplets can hang in the air for folks to breathe in for roughly an hour. Another reason is that roughly one in five people one in five that get the disease end up in the hospital. That's because measles can cause complications, serious ones, including diarrhea, bacterial ear infections, bronchitis, pneumonia, encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain, right? And some even die from this virus. So can't take it lightly. Last but not least, the U.S. has lagging vaccination rates. The standard has been, what, 95% of kindergartners receive childhood vaccinations, including the MMR vaccine that protects you against measles but for the 22 23 school year that percent dropped to 93 percent which is not good and what's really concerning is that young children don't get their first shot until they're one year old so they're quite vulnerable until that first shot which by the way has an efficacy rate or effectiveness rate of 93 percent the second and final dose is given between the ages of four and six and that provides 97 percent efficacy rates against measles now I know lots of parents also are concerned about vaccination I think this is due to misinformation. One misconception, this is a big one, is that the MMR shot can lead to autism. But I'll tell you, 24 studies have found absolutely zero connection to autism. Zero connection, not even a hint. This vaccine is not highly, not only highly, highly effective, but also very safe. So I recommend that parents follow the CDC's child and adolescent immunization schedule to help protect their kids from serious infectious diseases. Don't go to social media and talk to somebody about it. Talk to your doctor and see how safe this is. We can prevent these diseases, you know? Yeah, that increasing lack of trust for vaccines, it's... Exactly, and then prevalent. people say, well, it's not gonna affect me, but then, you know, you can, you can give it to someone who's vulnerable as you travel through the airport. That's what we gotta figure that out. And we gotta, we gotta protect not only ourselves, but others around you. And this one's been around for decades. Yeah, and we know how to deal with it. Now people are, you know, succumbing to misinformation and falling prey to it. All right, Doc, we appreciate your update. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Make sure to tune in to the Dr. Nandy Show this weekend. Doctor and his guests explore the world of genetic disorders and their impact on families. That's Sunday, 1 p.m. right here on 7.